G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Strybeck curve, which is a very foundational concept in tribology. Hopefully this will illuminate your understanding of it. So the Strybeck uh, curve has its origins in the late 1800s. There were some early investigations that were done to really look at the, the relationship between friction and speed in a journal bearing. And what um, this guy called Thurston found uh, was that there was a, a minimum at some point um, in the relationship between friction and speed. Obviously, some of the analytical tools and the measurement tools that they had at the time were not particularly accurate, but he was able to determine that within the relationship there was a, a minimum point. That got taken a little bit further by Strybeck, who we kind of named the curve after. He took it a one step further to look at the coefficient of friction versus speed. So rather than just friction, um, which obviously takes into account the normal force, he was able to do the assessment based on the coefficient of friction. And then two others, uh, Gumbel and Hersey, I think they did it actually independently in 1914, then looked at the relationship between the coefficient of friction and this term, which uh, is called Zn on P. Now, Zn on P is... A bit of an arbitrary construct. Um, what we do is we say Z is viscosity, N is rotational speed, and P equals load. And that really is a way of putting on a single axis all of the, if you like, major components um, that we, we need to take into account when we're talking about, you know, bearings and gears and cams. So what does the actual Strybeck curve look like? Well, you've probably seen it in textbooks. It looks something like this. Um, this is the sort of classical version that you probably already know, and it's really divided up into three different uh, sections. So we'll go through each in turn. So the first would be what we call boundary lubrication. Um, so to illustrate this, if you can think of uh, two different surfaces, um, so they're imperfect surfaces, maybe of a bearing or something like that, um, what happens here is that there isn't sufficient uh, lubricant film, or maybe there's no lubricant at all, and so the, the metal surfaces are in contact with each other. So you have, uh, if you like, uh, the, the lubrication is, uh, and the friction is determined by the surface finish and the material. As you start to support a little bit more load uh, with the lubricant, it goes into the mixed condition, which is where we have some load that is supported by the lubricant film, uh, but we still do have interaction of the solid surfaces. The final part of the curve is what we call the hydrodynamic section, and that's where we have a full lubricant film that supports the load of the two surfaces. So we have if you, almost complete separation. So they're the three major components. And if we were to compare it with uh, a, a graph of film thickness, the log of film thickness is a linear relationship where it continues to go up with this Z on P term. Um, but, you know, again, if we were to line up the three different segments, you know, we've got boundary, mixed, and hydrodynamic lubrication. So the relationship between the coefficient of friction and this Zn on P is not linear, but the film thickness is, or the log of the film thickness is. Now, it is a little bit different for non-conforming contacts. So non-conforming contacts like, let's say, for example, or maybe it's easier to explain what a conforming contact is. So we've used the example so far of a journal bearing, and that's where the two surfaces uh, have the same shape or the same form. So if we were to draw an average line between the two, they're parallel with each other. In non-conforming contacts, let's say, for example, a gear tooth, we know that there is a rolling motion at the pitch line, but everywhere else, the, the surfaces are not parallel with each other. In non-conforming contacts, which is, you know, gears or cam surfaces, the film thickness and the friction actually become decoupled with each other in the uh, hydrodynamic regime. 
And so the film thickness is actually determined by the oil viscosity at the inlet um, of the surface contact. What that means for the Strybeck curve is that it sort of um, curves down a bit um, in the elastohydrodynamic range. We'll talk a little bit more about EHL in a future video. So something else that we might want to um, investigate is how do lubricant properties affect the shape of the Strybeck curve? And this gives us a helpful tool for understanding how lubricants affect uh, contact surfaces. So as an example, if we control the EHL friction of the base fluid, so we often refer to this as the traction coefficient or the internal friction of the lubricant. If we can drive that friction coefficient down, then in the mixed and hydrodynamic regimes, we can reduce the coefficient of friction. So a very common way of doing this, for example, would be moving from a mineral to a PAO synthetic. Or if you wanted to go further still, moving from a PAO th synthetic to a PAG synthetic. In each of those cases, the traction coefficient of the lubricant goes down. We have really good lubricity and therefore the coefficient of friction reduces. Alright, another way that uh, we can affect the Strybeck curve with lubricant properties is also by controlling the film thickness. So if we maybe increase the viscosity, for example, of the lubricant, then we can get the boundary lubrication to start earlier. Uh, and that's just because with higher viscosity, um, you support, uh, you can support more load. And so boundary lubrication tend to, tends to start a little bit earlier. Another way that we can do this is if we form a thin solid-like film, if you like, with, uh, with a bit of shear strength in it. That can help reduce the coefficient of friction when it comes to boundary lubrication. So we generally would would be able to achieve this with uh, surface acting additives and friction modifiers. Or, alternately, we can change the surface roughness by altering, if you like, how high the peaks and the troughs are, we can bring on boundary lubrication much earlier. And that affects the shape of the Strybeck curve. So that was a very quick introduction to the Strybeck curve. Some of the major concepts around lubricants and lubrication. I hope this has been helpful. This has been Lubrication Explained.